Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of my Out of the Park Baseball 22 series with the Pittsburgh Pirates and uh, we are not off to the greatest start um, to run back our postseason appearance last season, our very short-lived postseason appearance. So we are fourth in the division. We actually were fifth for quite uh, quite a while. Although, uh, as you can see, we are playing better. Um, we are, we've won six games in a row after um, performing pretty poorly. Uh, we had a poor start. We started only with six. Um, you know, we still have, uh, you know, a good, bit, uh, good chunk to go. I mean, you know, we're played around, like, the 60-game mark. Um, you know, not, not quite there. So, you know, there, there's definitely plenty of time um, to, to come back. Um, our expected win loss we are um a little bit worse we should be um you know it says we should be uh you know we're we're one game under what we should be at this point and uh to be honest through the course of the season i got uh you know i was pretty disappointed with the performance um uh, with you know especially because of how well we ended up performing last year but um you know after thinking about it um a little bit um i, I settled down quite a bit um you know, just thinking about the organization because, I mean, in reality, um, you know, we we did, um, you know, get to relevance, uh, like, you know, way quicker than I, uh, you know, even expected to. Um, and the main, the main thing, um, you know, that kind of kept me, um, you know, feeling better about the situation is, you know, our, our, our minor league depth, which is pretty crazy. I mean, we are pretty loaded with, um, you know, top tier prospects, you know, prospects that are, you know, um, you know, future MVP candidate level, um, future Cy Young winners possibly, and then we have, you know, a good chunk of, you know, solid players that we have coming up the system as well, you know, a lot of these guys on the team are actually, you know, guys who, um, you know, came, pretty much came with the team, guys who we made, um, you know, first year acquisitions with, and just, you know, um, with rebuilding the team. And, um, you know, that just that has gotten us into a position where, you know, where we, we were a playoff, um, you know, we, we were a contender last year, you know, making the playoffs. And, you know, we're, we're having a down year this year, but, I mean, no, I think I think things will be fine. And, you know, in reality, we really do have a chance to, you know, come back and, you know, have a strong, um, you know, two last two-thirds of the season, I mean, no, really. Um, so basically um, what has happened um, to get us to this point is um, we just have not been scoring nearly as many runs um, as we did last year. Last year we did one of the better offenses. This year we do not. Our WOBA is way down. Uh, we're not hitting a lot of homers. Um, our batting war is down. Uh, we're not running the base as well like we were previously. Um, our pitching isn't doing as well as it was last year, but I, I have more confidence that the pitching can bounce back. Again, our, our fielding is kind of down from where it has been, so pretty much all all around we've, we've had um, down performances. Some of that is due to some of the injuries we've had. Almeas basically just hasn't even really been on the field. He's played about half the season at this point, and uh, he's going to be down for seven more weeks with a sprained elbow. Don't know how a sprained elbow keeps you out for about two months, but... Um, that's what's going to happen, and uh, Tristan McKenzie had a herniated disc, and somehow that only is going to keep him out for uh, less time than Almea, so um, don't necessarily understand that one, but uh, with that said, we're going to go ahead and get into um, kind of our team performances and break down exactly kind of what's happening, so um, our catcher duo still continues to be, uh, at least what I would say is the best in the league, Rodefeck continues to hit um, 302, 403, 528, um, Slash line so far. I mean, every year he just seems to get better and better. Of course, last year was kind of a breakout offensive season for him, and this year he is continuing that with just a monster um, season. I mean, starting off even way better than he did last season. Um, and you know, his partner um, Ali Sanchez, who was getting a good chunk of time just solely because of that seventy catcher ability. You know, I kind of liked his ratings with his a uh, high avoid K rating, and uh, you know, he he's been hitting too. I mean. Uh, 310, 348, and 345 slugging. He's been about a league average hitter, but I mean, with that kind of defense, um, he provides uh, immense value when he's hitting this well. And uh, you know, something it must be something about Pittsburgh that our our catching tandem just just hit for some reason. Like Sanchez, 
he really I mean didn't really have much major league experience um, previous to this year um, never had hit in his previous MLB experiences didn't really hit the minor leagues that well either but he comes to Pittsburgh and um, our backup catchers and our catchers in general just hit apparently um, the biggest disappointment of this year by far is um, right here, and that's Chai Juko. He just has not been hitting. I mean, he had, he's coming off those two monster seasons that he had in the past two years. I mean, this is just a poor excuse for a season. I mean, it's it's honestly just just been terrible. I mean, I kind of want to see his strikeout rate. Uh, I mean, his strikeout rate is way up to where it was um, from the, the past two seasons, not so much last year. But um, this year's year, his uh, Woba's way down, his Babib it was way down. So hopefully we can chalk this up just to be uh, being that his Babib is pretty low. But I mean, as you can see, he's been a negative war player. I mean, you know, he plays first base. He doesn't really even play a good first base. And, you know, he, he's not hitting. So he's been a negative to the team so far. And, you know, that's really the thing. Um, because, you know, like guys like Ko, you know, he, he's going to be due for a big salary. Um, jump next year. We're already right up to the max. So, um, you know, if, if we happen to not, you know, bounce back this season, you know, we're we're only eight games out of first. So we definitely, again, I don't want to get it wrong that you know, like, oh, bad start to the season or semi bad start of the season. Season's over. Like, we definitely can still win the division and go into the postseason, win the World Series, do all those things. But um, we're gonna need better performances out of um, guys like Ko, who pretty much, I mean, he needs to be the one who carries our most of our offensive load. He needs to be our main run producer. I mean, he drove in 118 runs for us last year, and we need him to do the exact same this year. So, yeah, if Ko doesn't perform, um, and even if he does perform, and we're not uh, not in it, um, he would be traded in the case that we wouldn't be in it because you know we we just wouldn't be able to pay him that type of salary. Uh, moving on to Adam, and he has picked up right off where he left off actually has a very similar season um to this point that he had last year numbers are almost identical um across the board so that's very good to see for him he's been um very good for us i mean again this year nick gonzalez who has also been playing in second base for us he's been money this year now his babip is a little high 339 i mean i wouldn't expect it to be his high but you know they're um, you know, they're acting kind of as a, a platoon at second base with Gonzalez playing against left-handed pitching, um, Admin playing against right-handed pitching, and uh, Gonzalez has also been used quite a bit as a pinch hitter, but uh, he has been phenomenal offensively. He's second on the team in homers, actually, and he's you know hasn't even received 100 at-bats yet this season, so that is pretty cool to see. Um, Cabrian Hayes continues to be very good for us. He was on the show for a little bit for us, but I mean, 316, 399. 454, you know, uh, Babip is probably high for him, so, you know, realistically, his numbers probably will come down, but, of course, he plays that stellar defense at third, so he has been very good for us at this point. Jiwon Bay, he um, is not replicating his small stint in the majors of last year. His Babip is pretty low, um, and we have just kind of needed him to fill in. He He's, he's a bench bat for us, and... Uh, and you know, doesn't really provide um, that great of defense to shortstop. So he's basically just a filler, um, you know, backup infield roster spot at this point. Cole Tucker's been taking over the backup duties at shortstop um, this year and pretty much all around the diamond as usual. He, um, uh, again, has mostly played shortstop, and he will pretty much continue to be our starting shortstop this year. And uh, we'll definitely need him to be, um, you know, as... Uh, um, Almanis is going to be hurt for an extended period of time, so he'll be the guy we're going to be turning to during this time. Um, at least uh, if he performs well and he continues to perform how he is, because he's been pretty good. Um, 254, 323, and 385. Can't really ask any more of him. He's been a battle league average hitter, slightly below, but we will take that production from him. Nick Senzel has also not been producing to his same production last year. Of course, I, I wouldn't expect him to do the same thing he did last year. I mean, slugging over 500. I um, mean, you know, it was not something I would expect Nick Senzel to do, but I do expect him to you know, slug about 450. And he's in the 387. He's been about league average hitter, but, you know, we're, you know, as, as the Pirates, when we're paying him, um, you know, a little over $8 million this season, he, he cannot just be a league average hitter. We can find that production at a much much cheaper price um you know probably in free agency or something like that so um you know we we need him to perform better again he will be a guy who's traded if we're out of it 
um, or even you know um, if he doesn't perform well and we still need to sh shuffle some things around based on how everyone's performing um, you know we can go ahead and do that um, next up Jing Shang um, he has really not hit this year and I mean it is kind of hard because um, you know he pretty much just is in a pinch hitter role like he's only started five games He's our just main guy when we are in a big situation and we uh, need a left-handed pinch hitter or a pinch hitter against right-handed pitching. Um, I mean, his BABIP is so low. I mean, he, he's, he is going to hit. I mean, when you just see these ratings, like, he doesn't, like, he never strikes out. Um, he, you know, has an insane contact rating. Like, he, he will hit. So, I mean... At least, I mean, his ratings make you think that he just will hit. So, I mean, when you put the bat in the ball that much, you know, and a guy like that with the ratings like that, he he will hit. So, um, I'm pretty confident in that. So, I, I assume his numbers will be able to pick up here. Um, Christian Robinson, he has not really been good for us this year. His defense in center field has been fine. I mean, he still strikes out a ton. Um, he's been bad. Um, you know, pr kind of the same numbers they had last year. Hopefully this... Um, you know, just isn't what he is, or else, you know, we'll probably look elsewhere in center field options, uh, even this year, you know, we have um, plenty of left-handed uh, outfield depth that we could call up, so, you know, and I wouldn't be hesitant to do that if he keeps um, performing how he is. Um, Esteban Florio, same thing with him, we have plenty of left-handed bat options, and if he's not hitting, he will be back down to the minors so fast. Um, you know, I probably won't give him him much more of a change, especially. I mean, he's striking out 35% of the time. Um, it's really hard to be an effective hitter when you strike out that much. So, I mean, you know, he has not been good at all. But a guy who has been pretty good in his, his uh, you know, role that we pay him to do uh, is Alexander Palma. I um, mean, you know, he's our pretty much our only, our main bat that we have against, um, you know, left-handed pitching. Um, and we need him to hit lefties well, and he's done that job. He's slugging over 600. Of course, very small sample size, but uh, he, he's done his job in the ABC he has gotten uh, so far this year. Moving on to pitching, um, pitching-wise, um, uh, we have had some, um, you know, some minor struggles. Um, we have some guys who aren't performing the best. Robert Broom and Blake Cedarland have not been good this year. Um, you know, we, we do have plenty of pitching depth, so, you know, if these guys continue to struggle, they will they'll get us sent down, so, uh, you know, not, not too much to think about there, I mean, you know, if these relievers aren't performing well, they just go down if they continue to not, Quinn Priester, he's gotten off to a little bit of struggle side, of course, he got injured last year, he got injured for a little bit again this year, so he, he, he's, he's a guy who kind of goes back and forth, um, hopefully he can find some consistency and put in a good season here, Mitch Keller has, I don't even know what's happening with him, I mean, um, actually, let's go ahead and look, actually, because I uh, haven't really done much of that um, in recent. Um, yeah, he, I mean, he's not striking out nearly as many guys. His strikeout just looks like they continue to go down. Home run rate's about the same. Um, he is walking a decent amount of guys. Um, going to some of the expanded stats here. Um, yeah, I mean, he's lying the same amount of hits. Uh, I guess you could probably chalk some of this up to some BABIP luck, uh, I would suppose. Uh, I mean, yeah, teams have a 327 BABIP off him. It's probably been much lower um, previously in his career. But, yeah, I mean, Mitch Keller's another guy. You know, he's another year team control after this. If he continues to not perform well and we're in last place or even, um, you know, we have so much pitching depth, Mitch Keller probably is the most likely guy to be dealt no matter what. Even if he is um, performing okay by the time, um, you know, that uh, you know, come, trade deadline comes around, even if we are perform uh, doing well as a team, he still could get traded. We have, you know, a good amount of depth on the team, so um, you know, he could be pretty easily replaceable, especially with a guy like Carson Montgomery, a prospect who we have coming up. Come on, Rocker has kind of been so 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 far this year. His ratings continue to go up and up and up, which is good to see. Um, and his his fib is about a a low lowish four, so I'm confident that he can pitch better. He he had a rough start to the season, and he's uh he's been pi uh, been pitching better uh, of recent, except for kind of a, a blow up start here uh, against Washington, um, the last uh, two starts ago, I guess. So other than that, he's been uh, pretty decent after that slow few starts. Dick Mears, we just called him up too early to say on him, but he's been good, and he's pretty much always been good uh, ever since we started using him. 
on Kawasaki. Um, he had a really bad start, uh, you know, appearance in the majors last year. Been much better this year. Hopefully, continue that. He strikes out a lot of guys, although he does uh, have not good control. So it's kind of a mixed bag to see what you're going to get with him pretty much every day. Ryan Nelson can to be pretty good for us about the same season he had last year. Again, a good strikeout guy and doesn't walk a ton of guys and also um, not really a home run problem. Scott Alexander has not really gotten many innings for us, but he's been bad in the innings that he has. Um, he just has seems like he has no control. Um, you know, he's an extreme ground ball guy. We need him to perform well, um, and he just hasn't so far. So hopefully he can get things going for him. Javigura, he's been fine. Um, you know, pretty low FIP. He hasn't really gotten many innings so far this year. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll continue to monitor how he does. His ratings went down a little bit, but still, again, he continues to just do well, even though his ratings aren't, you know, the best. And, you know, I don't really even particularly like his ratings because they're all kind of so mad. But if he keeps pitching well, we'll keep throwing him out there. Victor Gonzalez, he has been much better than uh, Alexander. Um, and he's he's been our most effective left the this year. Didn't have a great season last year, but definitely bounced back this year. Having a pretty good season actually. I mean, striking out twelve guys per nine. Walks are a li- little low. Home runs about where they are. Um, Cedar and Broom that has been their problems. Home runs have been allowing a lot of homers this year. Um, Nick Nelson has been our best starter this year, and he was our best starter last year. So pretty crazy to see that he just continues to pitch well for us, especially as a starter. He'd, Worked a lot of the bullpen last year and wasn't uh, as good as a starter, but this year um, has only started and has been uh, excellent. Reggie Lawson, um, actually in the closer role since Tristan McKenzie uh, has been out, and he has been money. Uh, you know, he had that injury, um, you know, two years ago last year. He didn't even really see the major leagues and wasn't good in the time that he did pitch in the majors. Uh, I thought, you know, his career kind of might have been over because his ratings seemed to dip a lot in AAA, but. Um, you know, once he kind of got back to reliever since he was starting AAA, um, you know, he is has been very effective um this year. You know, a guy who I thought about kind of DFAing at the beginning of the year, but I'm glad I didn't because he has been, I mean, a very key bullpen piece for us uh, down the stretch here, or not down the stretch. Um, so far, just so far this season. Um, so yeah, I mean, again, I'm pretty confident that we can, I mean, know, perform better, at least better than fourth place. Um, we're only eight games back. Um, you know, I think we can come back and catch the Cardinals and Cubs. Um, we'll be pretty tough, and we will have to do well, um, you know, and play consistently well. But, you know, I think with kind of some of the performance we have, um, you know, Co. I think he should be able to bounce back with that low BABIP. Um, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, some other guys we have in the outfield can bounce back. You know, if not, we, we have plenty of guys, you know, again, like Carson Montgomery, our second-round pick from 2023. Um, he's pretty much major league ready at this point. Um, Kobos is pretty ready if we need to call him up. Um, we even have this shortstop prospect that has just been in the system. Um, you know that's available to. I mean, come up. We have Hudson Head, who's a a good bat that um, you know we could use as a left-handed bat. Um, Sammy Siani, another left-handed bat. I mean we. We have uh, no shortage of lefty, lefty bats, and you know whoever is, whoever's doing well, um, you know could could get the call. So I will not hesitate to call those guys up if our left-handed outfielders continue um, to not hit. So again, thank you for watching. Um, I think we'll go ahead and end the episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe. Let me know how you're enjoying the series. Um, definitely have been really enjoying posting this series and playing this. I'm pretty, pretty invested in the team. So, you know, um, you know, keep coming back to, to play pretty, pretty frequently because it's, uh, it's been, it's been a fun series. But again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next episode.